Hello and welcome to another edition of your vlog series here at Media Insights. I'm Christy Kali Singh. This month we'll be looking at the rise of the e-commerce industry in Trinidad and Tobago. And to take us through this conversation, I'm being joined today by Mr. Karen Rose or the Digiboss himself. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for having me, Christy. So what exactly is e-commerce? So e-commerce or electronic commerce is, I mean, to keep it simple, as long as the transaction is happening digitally, then that is pretty much e-commerce. Any digital transaction will fall under e-commerce. And recently we've seen an increase in e-commerce in Trinidad and Tobago. And do you yeah. think that COVID might have pushed many businesses toward that direction? Yeah, I mean, COVID was definitely a good catalyst. I mean, things were happening a little bit before, not as fast as we'd like. But the reality was when COVID hit, if you wanted to do business, we, we were closed. No, hand, no, no physical contact, stores were closed, transactions had to happen online. So people started to really figure out, how do I get paid online? What does that look like? Are we going to be able to take credit card transactions for yeah. businesses that weren't thinking credit cards? A lot of them were just thinking about bank just bank transfers, and even that is a part of, of, of e-commerce. So, yeah, COVID was definitely a good catalyst. You know, now I just hope that all of the lessons we've learned from COVID can continue. Do you think that's going to happen? Well, I think that's part of why this conversation is happening today. Um, I think we, we, we know that a lot of businesses have returned to how they were doing no, things. We'll see before mm -hmm. COVID, right? But the reality is, is that with the economy not where it needs to be, businesses need to start thinking about, for one, how do we get paid from clients, not just within our, our, our the radius of our business, but how do we get clients from all over the country? If I'm in, if I'm in Port of Spain, I, how do I get money from my arrow, yeah. right? How do I get money from San Grande? So businesses need to start thinking about that nationwide currency, but then, if we have e-commerce enabled, that allows you to start participating in the global economy. And if a small business can start to sell digitally, and it can start getting clients from different parts of the region, different parts of the world, now you open yourself up to not earning more money for your brand. And I guess that's where um, foreign investment comes in as well. Yeah, and I mean, it, it doesn't like, yeah, that, that foreign investment um, to help build a lot of the companies uh, is 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 always going to be needed. I'm never going to say no. What I would like to see is we have so many tools available to us right now without the need of any investment yeah. that we just need more businesses to learn about and start to implement so that they could uh, start utilizing e-commerce to the best of its ability. Let's talk about some of the advantages of e-commerce. How can businesses benefit from this? Well, the big one, as I said, is now you start to get that nationwide money. You're not limited to people having to physically come to you, right? Let's take today, for example, not just today, but the past couple of weeks, yeah. it has been flooding all over the place. And if you had a physical business, like I went to go do some shopping, and when I went, the business was closed due to roads being flooded out and people could not go. You know who made money today? Everybody with an e-commerce business because we could sit down at our home and shop and home. shop and swipe our cards. So that's the biggest business. And then on top of that, it also e-commerce also extends the business hours of your business. So let me ask you a question. What time do you shop online? At night. At night, yeah. right? What Not the regular Opening and closing hours. There we go. So if most people are shopping early in the morning, late at night, maybe they're on their lunch break, yes. right? And they can't physically leave. Now with e-commerce, once your business is e-commerce ready, people can shop at any point in time and you can be earning currency 24-7, 365. No employee works better than your website or your e-commerce platform. Are there any disadvantages? Disadvantages to e-commerce, I think, really comes down to how good do the brands themselves understand how to create an online experience, right? So have you gone to a website where the website looked like spam? Yes. 
Have you felt comfortable putting your credit card details on that no. website? No. There you go. So for me, one of the biggest disadvantages is does the business themselves, do they understand how can they create a online experience, at least with the physical store, even if the store doesn't look the greatest, yeah. they might have the product. You're going to be able to go in there, touch, speak to the person, verify whether it is real or fake or verify the quality of the goods and you, but you're physically there. But if the website doesn't look good or the website is too slow um, and all the technical aspects of, you know, just having a good website speed does it have the security like the SSL certificate yeah. if it doesn't have some of these things then you are already turned off from making that purchase and that can be a bit of a hindrance for um, e-commerce not too much of a disadvantage but if the businesses don't understand how to do that online it can be a disadvantage what are some of the e-commerce tools that are commonly used um, in the Caribbean I mean not not just in Trinidad but throughout the Caribbean and this is your this is your specialty so you tell us, what are some of the tools um, for e-commerce? Yeah. So the main components for e-commerce to work is, number one, the customers themselves need to have a credit card or a Visa debit card. If the customers themselves don't have a way to pay you on your website, then the rest of the stuff just kind of falls apart, right? Yeah. So what I would always tell business owners is you should know what are all of the cards that people can use to pay on your website? That way you can educate your audience on how to do business with you. Hey, do you have the new uh, Lynx Visa debit card? Did you know these things work on our website? If you start to educate your customers, they're going to start to utilize their cards the next time. So the cards is number one, that mechanism. The second component would be, do you have a website, right? So when we go and we shop online, we are typically shopping on somebody's website. Yeah. You don't necessarily need an app because almost every website now is mobile responsive, or at least it should be. And if it's not, tell you, talk to your developers. But once the website is mobile responsive, you don't necessarily need an app. So people can shop on your website and it'll be modified for your smartphone. So the website's the next thing. Then the third component is the payment processor. So with your business, um, does your business utilize any one of the Caribbean payment processors like First Atlantic Commerce, uh, WePay, Social Pay. Um, there's 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 a number of them, right? The banks also have uh, a payment processor as well. Uh, so do they? Does, does your business have one of those? Are they using PayPal? Are they using Stripe? So payment processors is a big thing. And then last but not least, let's just say if you don't have a website, but maybe you're using social media alone, are you using something called payment links or payment buttons? So the banks offer a service, a couple of other companies offer that pay link service. So that would allow you to have just social media. You would create all of your products in, in your catalog with that service provider and it would generate a link for each product. So you'd put in the description, the name, the amount, and it would generate a link. That way when you share it across social media, you put it in your link in bio. When people click on it, it opens up a payment form. People can fill it out and then it would process the payment and take the money from the person's card. Oh. So those are the key components for e-commerce. I'm learning as we go here. Just <laughs> no worries. <laughs> no, because um, I, I feel like sometimes when not even um, people of my age, not mm -hmm. old or whatever, but older folks tend to shy away from shopping online. Mm -hmm. um, for various reasons, because probably they don't trust, you know, to put their banking information out there mm -hmm. or those kind of things. What are some things that probably businesses can do now, um, apart from just having a, a more easy, accessible website or, you know, something that makes it more appealing to have ageable folks mm -hmm. or the older folks, I should say, um, shop online as well? Mm, great question. Because you see... Um, a lot of times it's the younger people who are shopping online. I yes, think. yes. So that's a great question. So what I will say is um, um, years ago when I used to work at Apple back in Canada, one of the things that we would do is we have workshops that happen inside the Apple store. And we're teaching customers how to take pictures how to code, how wow. to utilize the apps so they could make their own movies, how to make music, right? 
And what we would do is we would actually help people learn how to use the banking apps. So we would help them download the app, help them sign in, show them how to navigate the actual app. But also in the banks themselves, when they were rolling out online banking and the banking apps, they actually had workshops in the branches for like the first six months. So like every 15 minutes, there was a workshop that was happening. That way they can get people in in groups and show them how to use the banking app, how to use online banking. They did that for the first six months. And then after the first six months, they had kiosks set up in the branch. That way, when you're coming in, they ask you, hey, what are you here to do? Pay a bill? Did you know you can pay a bill online? You don't know how? Come over here. Let me walk you through how to do it. And they walk you through how to do it. So now you have people who were 80 coming into the Apple store, buying the iPads. Wow. And they're showing you how to do banking with the application. And when they're taught how to use these devices, do you think they're going back to standing up? Not. No, and it's not going to be for everyone. And what people need to understand is not everybody's going to convert. But here's the thing. If 30% of the people who are frequenting the banks right now, if they were removed from the banks because now they're utilizing the other tools, it frees up the banks and the people who have to go in or, or need to go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, we, we know that month then it's crazy at banks. And Insane. <laughs> It's been a long cry, especially for um, the older folks. Again, um, they have to stand there with everyone. And these are things that I know, I think, um, could have been last year so that they were trying to rule out. I think it was during COVID as well yeah. when they were trying to rule out the new online system for pensioners to even receive their money um, deposited into their account so that they don't have to go to the, um, to the bank physically. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're, we're, we're making there's, some kind of headway. It's, uh, there's a it's lot, there's a lot more, there's a lot more that could be done because the reality is until you teach people how to properly use these systems, they could never be trust. So if you're not teaching them, there's never going to be trust. There's always going to be skepticism. They're always going to want to deal with a human. Yes. So a lot more mass education so has trust to happen. Issue. It is, it, it, it is because the, the tools that we have, they, they work. The tools that we have work, right? And they work to a good degree for even the most basic things. You want to pay a bill online. You want to receive money. The basics, for the most part, work and they work well. It's just if people do not know how to use them, there's going to be that skepticism. There's going to be that fear because it's their money. Yes. When you make a mistake and you have to now go back through the process of trying to get your money back or launch an investigation, that's where it gets sticky. So I think if more mass education happened, again, we're not going to get everybody, but if we can get a higher percent of people utilizing the tools, everybody else benefits. Wow. Let's talk a bit about the models of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know there are several different models. So yeah. if you can just walk us through, um, probably top three. Yeah. So there's, there's, there are... In total, six business models, and obviously some are more are more popular than others. So the most popular e-commerce business model is uh, B2C, business to consumer. So that's your typical, let's go on a Amazon, let's go on Wonderful World, let's go on a, a, a business website, purchase our products, B2C. Then you have B2B, so business to business. So that's a business selling the products and services to other businesses, right? Okay. Then you got uh, business to government. So you have businesses who are selling their products or services specifically to governments, right? Then a very popular one is B to B to C, which is business to business to consumer. So that's like um, Alibaba. Okay. So Alibaba is selling wholesale and they're selling wholesale products to a business. That business gets the products and in turn sells it to a consumer, right? And then you have customer to customer. Hmm. That's marketplaces. Oh, yes, right. Yes, so that's yes. the thing Facebook marketplaces yeah. or any or Craigslist or any platform that allows you to post your products, post your services from customer to customer. You're not a business, right? Nobody involved in that transaction is a business. And then there's one more. Let me just pull that one up. That one is consumer to business. So consumer to business, that gives us our six. So consumer to business 
is let's just say I'm making hand lotions, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a private, I'm a small person, right? Not really that big and I'm making lotions and whatnot and I'm actually selling it to a business okay. so that yes, they yes, can yes. go in stock, put it on their shelves. Yeah. And what, what, what are your go-to? The go-to really is B2C. That's the go-to. Go-to is business to consumer, right? You have a business, you have products or services that you are selling, and you are selling to consumers. That's really the easiest one. Um, the other one would be, you know, marketplaces. So let's just say if you list your products on a mark on a on a marketplace platform, like an eBay or like yeah. an Amazon, and then people go to that platform to purchase the products. So that's another popular popular one. What would be your advice to businesses who have not yet explored e-commerce? If I have to give you advice going into 2023, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, honestly, honestly, uh, I mean, at this point, at this point, if you have not explored e-commerce for your business, you missing out is not even the word anymore. It's going to be very hard for you to survive in this world, um, in the business space, because we are not competing with the business next door anymore, right? If you want a product and you go online and you can't find, you Google and you can't find a product, the business doesn't have an online presence, right? But you find a product and it's on Amazon or it's on a business away. What do you do? I take it from Amazon. You take it from Amazon, you order. So, we're not competing with our businesses <laughs> next door. Yeah. We are literally competing with the globe. So when your business is no longer, if, if your business is not online, if your business is not e-commerce ready, right now the number one thing that e-commerce does for everybody is save time, right? And time is the currency that we cannot get back. It's the most valuable asset. So if I can order online from your website and you have your logistics set up, pay online, the products get delivered to whatever location I'm at, you are now saving me time and everything comes to me. I buy back my time. If your business is offline, not e-commerce ready, I have to give you time. Because yeah. I have to physically drive in traffic, go to your business. I have to plan. Oh my God, their business is open Monday to Friday. And, we're, and we in Trinidad, we have an anomaly that happens, right? Where most businesses open Monday to Saturday from 9 to 5. Or 4 on Sunday. Or 4, right? Yeah. I went to a business the other day and they're open from 9 to 2. Monday to Friday, 9 to 2. Saturdays, 10 to 1. That is such a short window of yeah. time to do business. When does a working person have time to do business? And then we wonder why things are inefficient because in order to conduct business, you got to run away from work. Yes. So. And traffic. And traffic. And rain. And the rain. So again, if you don't, if you're not e-commerce ready, you're losing out to the comp the competition because the competition now is worldwide. Anybody can buy the product or service. But then also, not having e-commerce for your business, people have to now give you their time. They have to plan. Versus, your e-commerce ready. I can buy from you any time of the day any day of the week and the products get delivered to me even better if it's digital products you get it immediately yeah. right so yeah uh karen before we go any mm -hmm. closing comments yes e-commerce allows you to participate in the global economy the greatest email a business is going to get moving forward is new order and the money is already in your account if that does not, if that's not your love language as a business owner, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Karen, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. So, it's on that note, we end this edition of your vlog series, Head Media Insights. I'm Christy Callison. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs>